Hold on on tight tight for the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the the alternative alternative to the alternative alternative media. media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Affirmative. Okay, we're back in the investigative journal for the start of another week in this beautiful land of paradise we call America the Great. It's uh, October 23rd. Boy, is it hot in Los Angeles. Uh, Record-breaking heat. 105 in Sherman Oaks right now, if you know where that is. That's right down in the valley. And I'm just reporting this because I'm not there. And thank God for that, or I wouldn't even be on the radio today. Because it is too hot to even talk if you're on 105 in the valley. And that's probably conservative. I mean, it gets hotter in other places. I imagine they're going to hit record-breaking heat again tomorrow. And then you got these Santa Ana winds. I don't know if you've ever been through that. I used to live up on the grapevine. Whoa, my goodness. I used to get my... I thought my car would blow away and I'd be uh, in the next county. But uh, they got 40 to 50 mile an hour winds, high heat, dry conditions. And they say that this week is the uh, the biggest week for wildfires in California. So uh, we may see more burning in California, these Jesuits, they love to burn things down, you know. I really don't want to go on a camping trip with them. You know, I really don't. Uh, they're, they, you know, you start a little uh, little fire to make some hot dogs, and they'll burn the whole forest down. <laughs> How are you going to get out of there? You know, they probably got some helicopter that's going to airlift them out, and you're stuck there. Now, why do I say the Jesuits? Because they are involved in everything. They're involved in geoengineering of the weather. They're probably the world's most renowned uh, geolog- no, geologists, astrologers in the world, going back to um, their baby boy, Copernicus. Now, isn't that a joke? Copernicus is Polish. And so are you going to believe a Polak when he tells you see, the Earth is round? Come on. I've been told my whole life that you can't screw in a light bulb. You know, two poles can't screw in a light bulb. So why would you believe Copernicus? Think about it. The earth is flat, folks, and let's get used to the idea. That's why I consider myself a a flathead, okay? Me and the flathead Indians. That's where I'm going to spend the rest of my life, searching out the remainder of the flathead Indians that the the Jesuits genocided in their Native American schools. Now, that's why they call themselves the great educators, because when you go there, man, you're just dying to learn, aren't you? Get it? Dying to learn. But if you read some of the atrocities that have gone on under their watch in these schools, really they were there to wipe out the traces of Native Americans. And you know, they loved the Native Americans, they say. Well, do you know they, they, uh, well, let's talk about the Cassini Project. What a hoax. Now, if you believe NASA is for real, please get off my radio station, okay? I don't want to even deal with people like that. Really do it. Just hang up. I mean, whatever you do on an internet, just get off, because it's ridiculous. I mean, if you look at that, just spend 10 minutes of your life looking at some of the things they tell you that are real. I had a big discussion this week about satellites, and uh, people can't believe there are no satellites. Well, that's because they've been told there were satellites. What if I told you that, uh, you know, I could make up anything, and uh, if I was a person in power, I'd believe it? You know? So, anyway, we get back to uh, this flat earth idea and the Cassini project and NASA and this whole idea of taking over the control of the mind when NASA came into being as the only people that know anything about this earth and what's surrounded and on the sides of it and up above it and below it. We've only, we've only dug seven miles deep, so how do we know what's down there? We don't. We've never gone. Out of, uh, we've never gone uh, into space like they tell us. Because one, gravity doesn't exist. And two, there's a, there's, a, uh, there's a dome up there. And they're still trying to break it, I think, with CERN. And what are they going to find on the other side? What, you know, what if they do, uh, you know, what they break through there and they send somebody 
up there, and then God plucks his hand out and says, Oh, come here, young man. Let me, let me tell you a little story about what lies above the firmament. And I'm going to send you back down to tell everybody that you can't get into heaven without a get-into-heaven card. So tell your friends that all their efforts to break down my firmament is going to not work because I created everything. And if I don't want you here, you're not going to be here. So go out. I'll let you go as a scout, scout for the Jesuit astronauts or the Jesuit astronomers, and you go down and tell them you can't get in here without a go-to-heaven card. Now, I want one of those cards. Wouldn't that be great? That's all you need. You get a go-to-heaven card, then you could do what the hell you want the rest of your life. You know, you show the card, and uh, I don't know how he keeps track of billions of people, but um, he's got to make a mistake every now and then. I mean, even God has to make one mistake. I mean, he, I can think of a hundred mistakes he's made, and they're all or maybe 300 or 400 all in the House of Congress. I can think of those mistakes he's made. I can think of a lot more mistakes. Uh, how, about, uh, how about Pope Pius XII? He's a good mistake. Uh, how about, uh, well, his, his boy Adolf Hitler. How about Stalin and uh, his mentor, uh, Father Edmund Walsh from Georgetown University, who uh, basically he's on Eisenhower's website. Do you know that? And do you know Eisenhower was a flunky in the military? And when he was awarded or given or uh, said, you're going to, Ike, you're going to take over the command of the forces in World War II. And he kind of went, whoa, you know, what, what am I going to do? I, I don't know how to do these things. Oh, we'll tell you what to do, Ike. Well, there were like 50 to 60 people well more qualified than him. And there was an uproar in the military at the time. How could they pick this guy? Well, he did the job for them, and then they made him president. And uh, all I can remember is him playing golf. Really, with his bald head, and get, you know, he'd have to wear, he'd uh, you know have to wear a hat all the time. But I digress. So we talk about Cassini. Now, Cassini is a a hoax of the ma of the magnitude only the Jesuits could do. Now they've been around. If you check out Jesuit astronomers, they've been around. More than anybody. That's what they, they do. They got more, they got the largest telescope lens in America. They got, you know, the Vatican has an observatory, the Vaticano Observatore, or whatever they call it. And these guys are all involved in this hoax to tell you that, you know, there's planets and all of this garbage, you know. And they can't prove it. All it is is pseudoscience. And if you really look into it, then they had to get NASA going with some, uh, they started it with uh, some of their Nazi war criminals, and they put them in high positions. You know, it really galls me. There's a lot of good American people out there that aren't making much money, and we spend all this money to re-segregate, you know, re-patriate. Uh, well, they weren't even patriots. We, you know, I went out to a lake one time when I was in Idaho. It's a submarine lake where they, 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 uh, basically test our nuclear submarines in the in the deepest lake in uh, North America, small lake up in our Idaho. And I went there to see if I could see the thing and get into that little air that little navy base and it's really creepy because there's hardly anybody around and it's a very small base. So I started driving all the way around the lake at beautiful homes. And guess what? I started talking to people after and they said, oh, you don't know that all these Nazis live up here. Yeah, some of these Nazis that they brought over from, uh, you know, World War II, you know, using their technology and spies and all this stuff. We, they give them big, huge mansions. And I said, I was talking to a guy at a local tavern. So I wanted to wet my whistle uh, before I went back on a hot day in Idaho, you know. And uh, we started talking. And the guy goes, um, yeah, I mean... It's well known around here. These people live in million dollar mansions. They get them, and probably we pay for them, the taxpayers. And so I did get a glimpse at one of those nuclear submarines. It, it surfaced, and uh, it's an incredible story. And I never did get a chance to meet any Nazi war criminals up there. But that's how they treat these people. I mean, don't you know they're working together? I mean, they bring them over, they give uh, Lerner Van Braun the best job in NASA, and they say, hey, listen, you've got to control. Whatever we tell the world, the world is like. And that's what NASA does through fake pictures 
and all of their crazy stuff they tell you. Now, Cassini was, uh, according to NASA, was in space for over 20 years, logged 4.7 billion miles, which is a lie. It never was even up there. It was a little toy they created. And they said it finally crashed or ran out of gas or whatever they do. Um, I guess it couldn't find a filling station up there. And it ran out of gas uh, near Jupiter. Now, Jupiter doesn't even exist. So this is the whole thing. It's kind of like, uh, you know, the Wizard of Oz. But Cassini, they named it Cassini, and they had this big, huge ceremony. Cassini is dead, and, oh, we love this thing. We put it up there. They treat it like it was a human being. Well, it was. Cassini was one of the most renowned Jesuit astronomers, I believe, back in the 16th century. And so they had to name it after him. Mr. Cassini was flying up there, okay? And uh, <laughs> so, and then you get to the telescopes. They get, they get the biggest lens, the most powerful lens, and they put it in, uh, they get together with the University of Arizona. Now, why would the University of Arizona want to deal with the Jesuits? Money. How about that money, power? And uh, I wonder about those professors in Arizona. If you went and told them, hey, uh, you know, these Jesuits here don't know, uh, you know, don't know what the hell they're talking about. And do you believe the earth is round? Well, of course it is. I mean, these prof and these guys are getting paid much, mucho bucks to teach you, and they have no clue. So why do you want to listen to them? Well, I guess they could teach you some. If they're history professors, they could teach you a little bit of... Um, Jesuit history, if they're scientific professors, they could teach you the folly of Einstein, overlooking Tesla, of course. And uh, I guess if they're mathematicians, you could get enamored by all of their quote. They put that stuff on the board. You know, I never did on, I couldn't get past X and Y equals Z or whatever they do. I started thinking, why, what am I, you know, what, what, what is this? You know, geometry was a trip for me. I did like making a perfect triangle, though. That was my goal in life. I had two goals in life, and I'm still trying. I want to make, not using a dime or a quarter or a half dollar, I want to make a perfect circle by myself, and I want to make a perfect pyramid. And if I do make that pyramid, I'm sure I'll be asked to join the uh, Freemasons somewhere at a high-level position. You know, I believe that if they asked me, I should be at right, right around the 33rd degree. I mean, what I know about them, I know more about them than they know about themselves, I think, sometimes. At least the guys under the 32nd degree. So why can't I just leapfrog right to the top? You know? And if I became a Jesuit priest, I know more about them, the truth about them. Why can't I just leapfrog and be one of the Jesuit generals? I mean, there was a Letikowski. We haven't had a Polish general in a while, right? And uh, I think I'd make a good one. I know all about them. Uh, in fact, maybe I could write the next book uh, that Kim Jong Yun that uh, he's going to write some kind of book. Watch some Jesuits up there writing it for him. Now they're sitting there, and Kim Jong Yun is going, "Oh Father, bless me for I have sinned." Now Kim, we're not here for confession. We're writing the book like we wrote for Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. We got to think of a name. Now, can you, well, really, I haven't written anything in a long time, not even a letter, Father. Well, don't worry about it. We're just going to put your name to it. Uh, do I, can I read it, though? No, you don't want to read it. You don't need to read it. We will read it and tell people you wrote it. And then people can read it and think you're brilliant. Yeah, that sounds good, Father. That sounds perfect. Now, what about the nukes, Father? I want to get these nukes up. And I want to blow the hell out of America. You know that. Who? I didn't want to do that when I was young, though. How did I become like this? Well, my son, I think at this point you can handle the truth. We took you and cloned you. And there's three of you. And you're not the real one. Well, you are the real one. But someday we put you in a trance. And so you don't know if you're the real one. But we have programmed you ever since you were 14 years old. So you've not been yourself since then. When you were a young man, you used to like to play a little soccer. You were pretty normal, in fact. I mean, you, you wanted to go to USC and play football one time because you used to watch American football. Now you want to blow that. Yeah, Father, 
I know I can kind of remember that. Why do I want to blow up America? I, I don't know any of those people. That's not important. You're part of us. And we control you. You see this little button here? Yes. You see this thing? When I press this button, you will say exactly what I tell you to say. Okay, let's try it. Okay, I'm pressing the button. Now you say, I am going... Now see, you're saying it already? I'm, I'm just thinking it. Now it's you. So, yeah, it is. I am going to blow the hell out of America. See? Well, press the button again. No, I'm not going to press the button again. I just wanted to tell you what we do. But here's the deal. What? Oh, can I just break in, Father? Go go right ahead. Go, go right ahead, son. When are we going to do this? Everybody's been talking about it, and everybody thinks now that I'm just a big talker. Can I, can I just push the button? I'd love, I'd love to hit uh, Oregon. Kim, it's not Oregon, it's Oregon. You can say it again. Okay, Oregon. Good. See? You're learning. Now, why do you want to hit Oregon? There's not that many people there. Don't you, wouldn't you rather hit a real big place, you know, where there's a lot of population? San Francisco. No, no, no. We have too many gay people there, Kim. We want to keep the gays in, in line here. Well, what about Los Angeles, Father? No. We got too many pedophiles there. We want to keep the pedophiles moving. Come on. Well, what about Washington? No, we can't hit Washington, D.C. Kim, I've told you a hundred million times. That's the seat of evil in America. These people are so sick there, we don't want to blow them up. In fact, you know, we kind of like what we built in the White House and those little statues we got all over the place and all the paintings. We don't want to take that down. Well, where then? Well, use your imagination. Okay, Las Vegas. No, no, no. That's Sin City. That's where we make all our gambling money, profits. Well, isn't there one place we can blow up America where there's a lot of people? Yes. you got to keep thinking, Kim. How about Chicago? Yes, Kim. Chicago would be very nice. We have a lot of Midwestern people there. People who love America. They're the soul of the country. But we can't blow up Chicago, Kim. Why, Father? You ever hear of Wrigley Field? I went there as a boy. You did? Father, where are you from? I'm from Chicago. That's why we're not going to blow Chicago up. I've got too much invested in that city. I mean, I've got more connections with the mob and all these people there. I can't blow Chicago. Well, what can we do? Boston, New York. There's all kinds of places. We're going to think about it still. We're thinking about Miami, but you know Miami's full of all these old people. They're going to die anyway quickly, so we don't need to blow them up. Well, Father, is this going to go on forever, or are we really going to have another war? What do you think I'm writing here, Kim? I'm writing the book that when you start this war, and then you get involved with China and Russia and all your friends, this book is going to outline everything that you did. And it's going to make you look like a genius. Am I going to survive this, Father? What about America? They said they're going to blow us off the face of the earth. And by the way, Father, how can I speak English? Because I'm programming you. Once you walk out that door, you won't speak any English. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, what, what, did, what, what? I've even forgotten what I said. Kim, look. You said, why, when can we blow this up? I know I said that. What we don't know, we're going to let you know. You're on a system like when we tell you what to do, you do it. So we don't. you don't ask questions. You're on a need-to-know basis. Uh, and when you step out that door, you won't remember a thing that this Jesuit priest told you. I'm busy writing your book. In fact, I'm starting it right now, and I wanted to ask you a favor. Yes, Father. Uh, could you please dress a little better? I mean, you look like something out of some magazine, some horror magazine. I mean, can't you think of some nice clothes to wear every now and then? Give yourself a nice appearance. That haircut's got to go as well. Well, Father, I've had enough today. Can I please go? Kim, you may go. Now, you see what I mean, folks? You see what I mean? That's exactly what these Jesuits are doing now, you know? And uh, as far as this Lucifer telescope, 
you know, I got off on a tangent because I just got word that they were meeting with Kim Jong-un or whatever his name is. The Lucifer Telescope, now that's an interesting proposition. So they go to Arizona and they say, we're going to build, we're going to put our telescope, we're going to call it the Lance Lucifer. Now, isn't that kind of crazy? I mean, if, if people like me to call them Luciferians, don't you think they wouldn't be so obvious about it sometimes? No, they don't care anymore. People won't believe it anyway. And hell, they got a show on TV called Lucifer. People watch it by the millions. Oh, hey, Lucifer's fun. Why not? But you know, if they believe in Lucifer, they have to believe in God, right? And they realize that if God wrote the Bible, then they realize they're not going to make. They're not the ones that are going to survive. So they're going to take as many people down as they can. Well, because so they go up to they go up to uh, Mount Graham, which is an, an in, a very special Apache Indian burial site, and they decide that they want to build it there. And guess what happens? Guess what happens? You know, the Indians file suit. They say, hey, you can't be on our you can't be on our sacred ground and put your Lucifer telescope there. And they you know, guess what? The the judge in the pocket of the Jesuits said, No, that's no problem. You know, you guys are archaic. What are you talking about a burial ground? And they they're not doing anything wrong. All they're doing is searching to destroy the firmament, you know, bring down the whole system. All they're doing is trying to penetrate and find God and give him a talking to. Yeah, that'd be interesting. The Jesuit general goes up to talk to God. What a conversation that might be. Now God, he's got a, he created him, so you know, we get into that old discussion. I did get a couple good emails on uh, why God created evil. Oh, and by the way, I've got to uh I've been. I've lost uh, the emails because I had. I like. Didn't you hear that? My, no, how could you hear? My computer was completely shattered. Uh, well, it, it, what it did was uh, I had to get a whole new operating system, and I lost a lot of my stuff. And so there was a guy, two guys that entered my iPad two goat contest. They only two then entered, and I promised to put them on the show, and I've got to do that in the next couple of weeks. So if they're listening. Contact me again. I apologize. But, you know, I'm not very organized anymore, purposely. Why be organized? I mean, they're going to blow the hell out of the world in a little while. And, uh, you know, what's the sense of what I'm going to do? Carry my organizational book with me and go, okay. At 2.30 today, I think I will search for for uh, clean water. And at 4 o'clock, I will see, I try to decontaminate myself before all my hair falls out. That'll be in my organizational book. But, you know, we're we're talking here really seriously about this, aren't we? But the Jesuits have been around for a long time, and uh, it just gets me angry when I hear stories like Cassini and all these things, uh, because so many people believe it. And <clears throat> there's so many clues out there, so many, so many signs and symbols, if you just open your eyes to see. And you'll be amazed at the world you live in. It's not at all like you thought it was. And I think it's your responsibility as a human being, and I hope that people that listen to my show are human beings, hope they're not clones, I hope they're not reptilians, and I hope they're not uh, anything but just regular down-home, good, you know, average Joes and Jills. Uh, And those are the kind of people that really need to understand what's happening, because they've been hoodwinked for so long. I was, for years. I mean, I believed uh, hook, line, and sinker. I wanted to be a priest at one point. Believe that? Oh, I'd have made a great one, wouldn't I? <laughs> I had a, I had a friend, young kid, he's twenty three. He says, "Man, he knows a lot about the Jesuits." He says, "Man, that would be good to get in with them." You know, he's joking, but he said, "Look what they get everything." You know, look at me. I'm work. He's working his butt off for a little money. You know. So I guess if you're willing to sell your soul to the devil, you can become a Jesuit priest. Okay, we'll be back in three minutes. Don't want to go overboard here over time. Uh, back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment rights media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. 
So without your help, these programs cannot continue on internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The following, the following program, program is labeled dangerous, dangerous and off-limits limits by the, by the Supreme, Supreme Jesuit, Jesuit Command. command. But, stand but stand tall, tall people. people. Listen, listen up, 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 and you, you may, may just, just learn, learn something. something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, that was a quick three minutes. Glad you're back. I uh, hope you're not one of the reptilians or the clones. Um... Hope you're just one heck of an average human being. This is Greg Anthony on the Investigative Journal. Go to my website at uh, Greg Anthony's Journal at uh, WordPress dot, dot WordPress dot com. Got to put those dots in there nowadays. Say calm dot com, not calm calm. But anyway, I'll go there and you can get shows going back well over a long time. Regarding the Vatican, 12, 13, 14 years. Regarding the Vatican-led New World Order, <coughs> excuse me, all its tentacles, and how it stretches all over the globe. The uh, Jesuit Vatican and this organization, probably the most deceptive, deceitful e organization in the history of the world, as we know it. And I'll tell you, they're even getting away with more and more as they as as technology gets better and better. People become dumber and dumber. So they can get away with just about anything. 
telling you. It's hot over here too where I live. I'm not going to tell you where. Not that hot, really. But uh, not that far away from the Vatican, by the way. Depending on how what you think is close or far. But <coughs> anyway, excuse me. Something in the air. I think they're trying to poison me. Greg, are you paranoid? Oh, no, no, no. Not at all. I just wake up every day saying, how are they going to try to kill me today? <laughs> I really don't. But anyway, there are people like that, you know. They build up their ego and they think, you know, the Jesuits are out after them. I don't think they care, to be honest with you. In fact, they need an enemy. They need somebody to talk against them. What else to get them to do? If everybody loved them, they probably, oh boy, I don't know what they'd do. Probably have to just make up people. Now, well, they get some of their own to talk against them like they always do. So anyway, I, every day we talk about, oh, there's going to be a big event going to happen, right? And you get that feeling with Trump. You know, he's kind of like, uh, he's a reckless dude, so to speak, uh, when he when he comes to words. And uh, words are what people hinge their life on, right, in politics. You know, they're all a bunch of talkers. I mean, I don't believe a word they say, but Trump is kind of entertaining, to say the least. And uh, But you get, a, you get the kind of wonder that he knows what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, where. And when he says things like, we've got to blow the hell out of them, and uh, it's going to be something like nothing you've ever seen. And uh, I ain't going to tell you what we're going to do because we don't let the enemy know. You know, what did they do? You know? You're going to take the cavalry or what? You're going to come in like General Custer? You'll be so far away from the action. You know, you'd be hiding in your penthouse or whatever. Now, could they take down New York with Trump Tower there? Well, he's probably got insurance. He's going to build another one in China. Like, I love the way he says China. Okay. So anyway, yeah, Trump is, gives you that feeling like everything's on the edge, ready to blow up. And so every day I look for articles that talk about it. But before I get to that, some people just go a little bit too far for me. And uh, anytime you start dealing with sports, I get a little upset. Now, we know the athletes are overpaid. We know that. And we know they work for, you know, but, you know, when they start talking about baseball, I get a little upset, especially around the time of World Series. But this guy says this, deep, dark secrets of sports, revelations hiding in plain sight. And he says this. He's got a whole bunch of videos. I'm not going to play them. You can go find them. He says, join me in examining the most comprehensive analysis you ever heard or seen regarding the true sorcery behind sports. After you watch the videos below, the only logical conclusion you will be able to arrive at is that there were designed to some sort of higher magic. The connections are undeniable and beg further questions about how the worldwide system of control uses sports as an instrument to pacify the public. Well, we know they pacify the public. But are they a sense of sorcery? I don't know. You know, I'm, I'll believe anything these days, right? You know, I noticed I didn't give the date today, did I? Or maybe I did. Well, I don't really care what day it is anymore. Uh, each video is preceded by a short summary. So he's got a bunch of them. More sports secrets revealed is one. And he says, the first video I've done below exam... Why does everybody do... Can't you just tell me? The first video below, I mean, I don't, I don't have to see pictures. I mean, I feel like I'm back in kindergarten. You know, draw it on the board so I can understand it because I can't spell the word laboratory. I got to go PP. Is that okay? PP? Uh, draw it on the board, the direction, so I can get there. Now, the first video below examines the Illuminati's fascination with the human eye. And how they hide truths be about the eye in the playing ball of the most popular sports. The sorcery is idol worship and distraction. The use of symbols is the method of sorcery. Okay. The second video he does is all about baseball. The diamond is the diamond firmament. Hitting the ball out of the park is the breaking of this firmament. No, it's not. It's the hit. You're not hitting the ball up straight in the air. You're going over the fence. My goodness. Have you ever been to a baseball game? I mean, this guy's trying to destroy my last hope for mankind. 
and my last hope for enjoyment in the world, and he's trying to destroy me. Except there's only one problem. What's that, sir? All players end up back in the grave. Oh, really? The dugout. The dugout. What do you want to call it? Home for the baseball players? You know, you want to call it... uh, I don't know. I mean, dugout, it sounds nice. It's under, you know, they dig it out. They go down in there, the dugout. I have went into bars called the dugout. Is that the grave? Now, come on. Don't destroy the last piece of humanity and this earth, this last thing that I enjoy so much. Even the number of players. And the pitcher. Well, now he's got this P-I-T capitalized, pit who is trying to cast you into the pit. No, he's not. He's trying to strike you out or make you hit a ground ball or get you to hit a double play. Tangible significance. You know, like I said, some people just go too far. The last video examines the basketball court dimensions and what they really mean. Nicholson, 1968, joins me for an in. Who's he? Jack? Jack Nicholson? I doubt that, joins me for an in-depth discussion. Just what I want to talk about. Ruin my, you know, I want to watch basketball too. Ruin that. Ruin everything. What do I have left? Nothing. Absolutely zero. You know, that's what you wake up to when you start uh, looking at the Internet. All right, so I said I would, uh, I always look for some story about something big is coming. WikiLeaks about to drop the nuke. They have nukes too? I mean, really? Julian Assange has a, uh, nukes? Huh. All right. He's not, he doesn't mean literal, Greg. I understand. Trying to get us cheap laugh. Okay, just saw the, this via JW's FB post. The whole world is just completely online. I mean, this is a cyber world. No, there's going to be pretty soon no real living people. People are just going to be inanimate objects that talk. You know, I'd be perfect. Uh, all you hear is my voice. I'd, uh, I don't need to have a body. Just a voice. Uh, this is apparently a big one. Now, let me read this thing before I post the article. Well, that'd be a good thing to do. David said in his, his FB post, Drop everything and run to read this right now. I'm not going to drop one darn thing because you don't even know what I have in my hands. If you knew what I had in my hand, I, you wouldn't want me to drop it. You know, it's got uh, it's a nice glass of uh, ice water. I'm not dropping anything. The 4chan insider has much more to say. It is very time sensitive. WikiLeaks may be about to drop the bomb. I told you, don't. Let those WikiLeaks guys play with explosives. Very dangerous people. I don't care what you have to do. Stop. Well, I care. I mean, what is this guy? Read this now. I mean, I anytime somebody does that, I just purposely go, I will not ever read it. But I am reading it. But that's because you didn't say it. And I'm reading it for you, even though it's probably stupid. But as before, I'm posting only the text here. Okay, thank you. I can read. Please go to the original. No. What about blind people? Did we ever care about them? I mean, what are they going to get out of YouTube's? You know, you can have you don't have a Braille YouTube's. I mean, we we've got to be more sensitive. People. As before, I'm posting only the text here. Please go to the original to view all the images and links. Yeah, just like I said, what if I'm blind? What about the blind? Would you ever think about them? You know, which, of course, are helpful getting the full picture. I have also saved this as a full web page. You know, I don't. this guy is annoying me. I don't really give a darn what you do. Just tell me what you want to say. In case this gets taken down or compromised at a later date, also, to check back during the... You know, by the time this guy gets to it, the world's going to be blown up. We won't have to worry about it. The 4chan insider from our last article is singing like a songbird. Who the hell is he? And we will summarize the newest intel in this article. You know, they talk like I have to... Everybody knows... There's a billion people texting 
and YouTubing, and I'm supposed to know everyone? Oh, Fort Chain Insider, yeah. I, I, I talk to him. I know about him all the time. Singing like a songbird, and we will summarize the newest intel in this article. If what we are hearing is true, WikiLeaks is on the verge of dropping much more damning set of information than October 2016, literally at any moment. This would then set the stage for a much larger announcement that will directly expose the ugly secrets of the FBI, CIA, and Fed for the last 60 years. What about the Jesuits in the Vatican? Where is this guy? You know, who, we know the FBI and CIA are frauds, and the Fed and the Fed is, uh, you know, foreign corporations, and not with the U.S. We know they're all crazy. The Vegas shooting may well have been a desperate attempt to distract the public, duh, from impending ep- epic geopolitical developments. We have every reason to believe that this collection of data provides signposts that a very big announcement may lead to a defeat of the cabal. Oh, I love these people. This guy probably... The defeat of the... Do you really think so? I love this stuff because this is what... Lately I've been on this kick. you got to read the, all this. I mean, there's so much garbage on the internet. I don't even know how people survive it. It's it's worse than getting into one of those mazes, you know, that they these rich people build on their estates in England. You know, they build hedges, and then you get in there, and you can't get out, and you die in there. And then they're big dogs who just came back from their fox hunt. Without catching a fox, go in there and eat you. That's what England's all about. So this guy thinks the cabal is being... Opposed by the International Alliance, opposing the cabal, is very real, and the most recent events have made that clearer than ever. As we will discuss, you know, I didn't tell you this, folks, but I'm a member of the International Alliance, and I oppose the cabal, and we're winning. God, would you believe that? The cabal is on its last legs. Oh, really? What is? Who is the cabal, by the way? I want to know. Everyone knows the truth. They are proverbial wounded lying lashing out. Oh, come on. Where's this guy coming from? One young woman who posted about their multiple shooters and wanted to organize a group of witnesses was found dead just five days later. Now, that's the way that they're... And they're really like wounded lions. They just killed the poor girl. Her testimony was that gunners on the ground were shooting from both directions as she and other survivors ran back and forth trying to avoid them. Now, did the gunners have real bullets in there? Or were they shooting at these? You know, that's how they stage a Hollywood scene. You know, did you ever watch uh, some of the movies, like General Custer getting slaughtered by all the Indians, by the Sioux, and all of that is not real? People die right there. Just They didn't die. They just acted like they died. Now, could that be the case in Las Vegas? Multiple weird clues that may have deliberately engineered, where's the surveillance footage? Jesus Campos, Jesus Comp. Consider the evidence. Campos may, you know who he is. He's the guy that supposedly got shot by the shooter who didn't exist, or did exist, and they, I, you know... Another one of their lone, lame, lone gunman stories. Let's read some of the article. Could have been a lot worse. Alliance Films leaked the idea that Google is compromised. The film Jason Bourne 216 is a clear example of the Alliance production, revealing how Google was taken over by the CIA, an alphabet agency. This is only thinly veiled. Google, please, I ask you questions all day. Well, maybe we, should we ask Google? Well, at the end of the show, I will. I'll say, Google, are you a CIA agent? Uh, we can ask her now. Let's see what she says. Okay, you know how you can tell. Google, how are you today? Are you a CIA agent? Huh. She doesn't want to answer. But she did say, welcome to the CIA website, Central Intelligence Agency. Huh. Maybe she is. Okay, she said welcome. Now i got to get back to this goofball here. Okay, if, if you're listening and you did this, I, I didn't really mean that. You're not a goofball, you're just a goof. Uh, Megan may be on to something. 
Disclosure of the Alliance. This person appears to be working for the U.S. intelligence community. On the Alliance side, I, I, I'm a member of the International Alliance. I don't know this. Does he know I'm a member? He apparently was part of a team that personally inspected the hotel room where the Vegas shootings took place as one example. Could be a presidential announcement you may not like either. Keep an open mind. Trump is a very flawed human being. Very rich, by the way. Flawed? We all are flawed. But he's very wealthy. And do you ever see his apartment up in the 66th floor in Trump Tower? It looks like you're walking into, uh, you know, ancient Egypt. You know, one, one occult uh, symbol after another, all over in gold, and the guy's infatuated with gold. He's flawed, but we all are, and he's rich, and that's why he's president, because he's a member of the Jesuit uh, Vatican-led New World Order, Freemason, you name it. I do feel, though, this man says, that we should have an open mind about the possibility that the alliance was able to gain the upper hand in the administration after his victory. Well, this guy has no clue. Especially, he doesn't even know that I'm in it, the alliance. Simply put, he's already in there now. We are hearing very, very interesting things about what the, his team is planning to do. What are they planning to do? They work together. Doesn't he get it? No. Everyone who works in this arena has dirt on him. Everybody has dirt on anybody. That's the way the world works. You know? And if you, do, if you don't, you make it up. A person with compromising personal details can still choose to step up and become a hero. I knew that. I mean, I'm in the Alliance. I, they asked me just the other day if I wanted to be a hero. I said, yeah. So I'm waiting for my hero papers. Uh, are we on the verge of stunning public announcements that will change everything we thought we knew? In 2009, we began providing direct insider leaks from the Alliance. They didn't. They did that without asking me. Hmm. I'm going to get to this guy. Everything they told us is now coming true. Oh, now we're back to the four chain insider. Like I'm supposed to know who this guy is. From our last article, singing like a songbird. You already said that. He like he thinks he's really cute, singing like a songbird. I mean that is so old, so lame. And we will summarize the newest intel in this article. Ooh, I can't wait. If what we are hearing is true, WikiLeaks is on the verge of dropping much more. He already said that. This, this, this would then set the stage for a much, much larger announcement that will directly expose the ugly secrets of the FBI, CIA, Fed for the last 60 years. Why not 70? Why 60? Did they just pick out a number? 60? Why don't you do 66? The Vegas mass shooting may very well have been a desperate attempt. I mean, he's, am I reading the same thing over again? Yeah. Las Vegas, I better pass. He's right. He already said that. Las Vegas is just 13 miles from Nellis Air Force Base, which is enormous, and less than three hours from Groom Lake, site of the infamous Area 51. That's where the alliance we have our meetings, by the way. Multiple insiders have revealed that there are secret elevators in these casinos. You want to know how crazy the world is sometimes? I remember I interviewed years ago. I had to do one interview about a UFO. Right, And his name was Charles Hall, and he swore he was a weatherman back in the 60s, and he swore that he saw the tall whites. And so I was fascinated with his story, and not saying it was a hoax or not a hoax, I just wanted to you know, say to myself, I did interview a guy that said he saw a tall white, many of them. And Charles was a very likable person. And he told me, you know, I was getting, I had a motorhome at the time, that I end up giving away. But I was going to drive my motor home because Charles gave me the exact coordinates where I could see them, but I never made it. But I still got those coordinates. So maybe you know where I'm going on my next vacation. And maybe you'll never see me again. I'll be flying up with the tall whites. But how are we going to get out of the firmament? That's what I want to know. Do they have a little escape route? Certain individuals will have cover jobs working at casinos. Multiple insiders have revealed that there are secret elevators in these casinos. Yeah, to stash the money away. <laughs> Leading to underground shuttles that take you to these very bases. This is where the reptilians, I bet, come in. 
The shooter had last worked for one of those most notorious black op defense contractors in the world, Lockheed, and showed clear signs of mind control. He would blow twenty, ten to twenty, thirty thousand a day in casinos. How can a person live like that? I, I wonder. I mean, I could think of a lot to do with ten to thirty thousand productive stuff to do, you know. Uh, was a well-known VIP and took multiple cruises to countries like Jordan and the United Emirates, Arab Emirates. Uh, he may well have been a black op employee. Okay, what's the big deal here? I mean, I want to know, he said this big bombshell. What's the bombshell? I thought he was going to tell me that there's going to be nukes flying or something. I'm getting really upset. Uh, multiple weird clues that may have been. The event featured symbolic and numer numerical clues that were left behind, much in the style of classic serial killers. The hotel named Mandalay may be a reference to a, man, a Mandela, Mandela, an organized pattern that carries a deeper spiritual meaning. Senior management of the hotel's parent company, MGM, conducted a mass sell-off of stock just weeks before, all at $33 a share. Here we go with the numbers. The beloved American rock country icon Tom Petty died almost simultaneously as the timing of this tragic event with no easily conclusive explanation. Now, how does that fit in? I, 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 a Robbie Williams song from 2002 features him going to the, the shooter's name may hint at the, how the Cabal Crown had their victims gathered in a paddock-type enclosure. A Robbie Williams song from 2002 features him going to the 33rd floor of the Mandalay Hotel with a gun and ending up in a likely shootout. The, the massacre occurred directly in front of a pyramid, Sphinx and Obelisk. The pyramid has a glowing Illuminati capstone that beams up into space. Now you're talking. The movie Mars Attack featured an E.T.-driven massacre in the same spot where the key to defeating the E.T.s was playing country music. The movie Hanging Over 2009, <laughs> I remember that movie, opens up with a helicopter shot in the exact corner and floor of the hotel where the shooting occurred. Very interesting. All right. We've now solved, we've now had the big bombshell. Where was it? I thought some nukes were going to be flying. But anyway, we have another day to worry about that. So we'll be back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. Do not want to go overtime. Have things to do, and so do you. So see you tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.